Hello, everyone, and welcome to Film Independent Presents, our year-round screening and Q&A series, now virtual. I'm Brian Sheehan with Film Independent. First off, I'd like to thank some of our ardent supporters, our lead sponsor, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, and our screening partner, Vision Media. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We have a very special guest moderator in Carla Renata to talk about uh, all about Fatal. Uh, and without further ado, I will let Carla Renata, AKA the Kirby Critic, take it away. <laughs> thank you, Brian. Dion, I love the hype you give me every time I interview you. I kind of just love you for that. Thank you so much. Well, we love you, man. We love you and we, and look, took a long time for you to get to where you are right now. And, and we don't have very many of you. So I'm very excited every time I have an opportunity to be around you. So we love you, man. Not to mention, we got the hottest movie in the world right now. What are we talking about? Yes, we do. But before we do that, let's introduce the other people that are on the line that folks may not know, but I'll start with you. This is Dion Taylor, the director and producer of Fatal, along with his beautiful, lovely other half, Roxanne Events who is a producer on the film as well, and one of the stars of the film, Mr. Michael Ely. Welcome, y'all. What's Thank you so much. Can I, add, can I add to Roxanne's resume real fast? Of course you can. The producer. All right. The, listen, listen. The, like the Ohio State, like the producer. You heard That's that, Roxanne, is, right? Man. Hey, listen, this, this lady, hey. this lady, she single-handedly, Produce this film, man, and and that's exciting. So I want to make sure we get the all right cat paws, cat the paws producer, the producer, <laughs> the producer, Come on. Roxanne Event. Is that there good? Go. That's there it. Go. I love it. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs> While we're on that subject, let's just talk about that. Y'all are a husband and wife team, and you have been working on films together for quite some time. Is there anything that has become challenging for y'all? And is there anything that's a benefit of working together? Oh, man. I'll let, well, I'll let ladies go first. Yeah. <laughs> go. Go, producer. You like, know, once you get Dion going, you ain't going to be able to yeah, shut I'm up. very well aware. That's why I said ladies first. <laughs> On that thought. <laughs> anyway, I mean, listen, the most challenging is keeping up with him. I mean, he is, he is a content creator, so he's always coming up with new ideas, you know? And so that's why we're able to be able to pump out as many projects as we can is, you know, the wind blows a certain way. And he's like, oh my God, I have this idea. You know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, what's the idea? And if the idea sticks, then I'll hear it over and over and over and it'll continue to develop more and more and more. And then I'm like, okay, this one, we're gonna be shooting in the next, you know, six months. So I better slate it and prepare for it. So it's, it's, um, it's a good problem to have, I would say, you know what I mean? Because you're only as good as your content, you know, as a production company. So um, keeping up with him is, is uh, very challenging, but I think I do a very good job with that. Um, I mean, the joys of working together is, you know what I mean? I feel like no one can do it better than me. I know him very well. I know what he needs. I mean, the look in his eye, you know, the, the his body language, I already know exactly what's going on in that brain. You know what I mean? So being Let me able just to say, I love how y'all hype each other up. I saw an interview that you did, Roxanne, was I don't know what the question was, but you were like, he is this, like you'd had a plethora of positive adjectives to describe Dion. And I've seen the same happen with Dion when he speaks about you. And for us, for me particularly as a black woman in the entertainment industry, it's so wonderful to see. I love y'all for that. Thank you so, 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 so much. Now, yeah. Dion, what you got to say about Roxanne? Because you know she she set you up pretty good. So you you know you got to bring it. Sorry, bro, you got to bring it. No, she's. I mean, look, she's incredible. Um, the 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 reality of it is, you know, for anyone uh, that's that's starting out independently. Uh, one of the hardest things that you have to be able to do is find someone that could work with you and go through trials and tribulations with you. This is a very hard business. You know, this is very hard to crack. 
you know, and who better than your wife or your family, you know what I mean, to do that with. And what's interesting is uh, we're independent filmmakers, Carla. I mean, right now, like this is an independent movie, you know, so this is not, you know, we didn't, we didn't get the money from the studio and then they said, hey, okay, let's go cast. Like this was me calling Michael Ely on the phone in the middle of the night and be like, Mike, I got something, man, listen to me. I'm gonna hit you tonight. Like that's, that's me going to Hillary Swank, her not knowing me and be like, listen, I know you don't know me, but please, like, this is like the real energy and you gotta have someone with you during those times because when you really go after it the way we go after it man you have some very very hard nights you know you have some very hard no's and some very like damn why can't we get that or why don't they understand what we're trying to make and you got to be able to lean on somebody that understands that and Roxanne knows like she had to pick me up off the ground a whole bunch of times you know as energetic as I am there's been some times where she's like, damn, I think he did this time. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, damn, dude, he got a post. And then, you know, and just slowly and surely I'll stand up like, all right, well, I think I got another idea. But it's 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 that hard, man. Like we, we've, we've dedicated our lives to independent film. Like we've dedicated our lives to our family and everything we do around making good films and pushing at this. So I could think of no one better uh, than to be my producer, than my wife. Um, and we kind of live with the business, man. Like, you know, some nights I'll land in bed and be like, hey, I got an idea. She'd be like, go to bed. You know what I mean? Like, that, <laughs> you need that, you need that. So I, I love what we do and I love what we're building. And I'm so proud of her um, because producing movies like The Intruder and Supremacy and putting together Black and Blue and, and now Fatal, like, you know, I just, I try to shine as much light as I can on her because man, making these movies for three and $4 million, shooting in LA, a, a thriller with Dante Spinozzi and Hilary Swank, like, hey man, I'm, I'm like, look, she said, Dion, you got, you got 20 days to make this movie or 22 days to make this movie. I know I got to do 90 setups. And I know if I go to her and be like, I need another day, it's gonna be no, but that's what's great about her. She'll figure out how I need that and what I need to get that. And she knows that I wear these movies on my on, in my heart. So it's fantastic, man, I love her. This is the thing, you, you've you done with indie, with indie film what Tyler Perry and David Talbert have done for black theater, you know, mm -hmm. with the theater circuit. You've done that with, with indie film. And so we appreciate you for that. Michael Ealy, um, this is not the first time you've worked with Deion Taylor. What keeps I love bringing Mike. you back? I love Mike, man. I love you, Mike. I love you, man. No, seriously, like, love you, Mike. I love Mike. We love you. <laughs> what keeps bringing you back to Deion and Roxanne? I, I, inquiring minds need to know. Listen, I, I, um, I, I was, I was just talking about this actually. It's funny because someone asked me what made you want to work with them again, right? Like after you work with them on the intruder. And I explained to him that I didn't know them when I did The Intruder, but what I learned about them on The Intruder made me want to work with them in the future, regardless of what it was. And it just happened to be fatal. But I, I will always support, um, you know, someone who's trying to build something outside of the system. That is, you know, like, it was almost, it was so inspiring to see, especially a black couple, let's, let's just call it what it is. Inspiring mm -hmm. to see a black couple trying to build, not even trying, building their production company, their brand outside of the system and not needing, um, not needing the, the, the system, the horse that is the system, not needing that whole monster to, to fulfill their dreams. And that is, you know, that's like a constant message with Hidden Empire. And I respect that. I love it. I'm hoping to do it myself. Like it's, it's something that's, it, it's just, I'm very much drawn to the model that they've created. And I feel like, you know, it, anytime you can work under those circumstances, you get these magical moments, like the first shot of the trailer was just a magical moment that Dion and Dante came up with like, 
hey, why don't we do this while we're here? And we'll, it's not scripted, obviously, but it'd be dope if he just looked at this and the, blah, blah, the gun on the table and done it. And it was like, okay, cool. And of course, at that point, Roxanne's got to make that work within the schedule. <laughs> so, you know, and I think again, their connection, their marriage, their understanding, their shorthand is what enables that kind of moment to happen because she already starts running numbers in her head and dates in her head and can figure out how to cut off 30 minutes there and pick up 30 minutes there and, and always understands that it's, it, these are the moments that are gonna be like, that are gonna pop, they're gonna work, they're gonna, you know, that kind of creativity. It's hard to get that when you're within the studio system and there's 30,000 cooks making a decision, 30 of which are, you know, on set and the other 20,000 are like, you know, uh, at a studio somewhere away from set. So it always feels like we're making the movie where we are. And that is the beauty of doing it independently. And, you know, bringing on people like Dante, who, you know, Dion sent a letter to. And, you know, once you meet Dante, you, you can't help but want to shoot everything you make with Dante. It's just, <laughs> he's just that guy. And it's yeah. like, they, you know, they're, 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 they're getting a guy who is in the studio system, but can flourish in the independent world. And it's like, this is, how do you not support that? How do you not want to be a part of that? And so that's, that's where I stand on, on Dion and Roxanne. And, you know, it's, um, it's a, it's a family thing for sure. I love, I just love how y'all hyping each other up. It's, I've been smiling the entire time talking to y'all. I'm loving this. Let's talk about the aesthetics of the film a little bit, but I have to address this one line that made me laugh out loud. It was about you, Michael, where I think it's your cousin <laughs> when he comes to visit, visit you and Dion, you wrote this. So this just makes me laugh out loud. When he said that you had Steph Curry's, uh, Steph Curry eyes and Jesus of Nazareth hair, I howled out loud. That was pure comedy. It was kind of funny. That's that, you... that's that moment. Ty, first of all, that's Tyron Turner, the legend <laughs> that is Tyron Turner. And that was that was actually one of my favorite scenes to shoot because that was the scene where we kind of solidified ourselves as family. And you know, we have the opening scene, we have an opening scene in my office where you kind of get an understanding of who we are. But that was the scene where we solidified that we family, we gonna look out for each other. And we, you know, we ride together. Yes. Um, and I remember when he said that, you know, like, I remember when he said that, you know, it, it's so funny because I'm like much older than Steph Curry, you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> it's funny because, you know, now it's like people making the connection to me and Steph Curry now, which I think is hilarious. But I'm significantly older than Steph Curry. But yeah, Jesus, that. That was Jesus of Nazareth hair was the first I've ever heard. Oh my God, that I laughed when he said that I busted out laughing out loud yeah. and they ran it back so I could hear it again. Yeah. Because it's Nazareth. just, it's just <laughs> and now I can't ever look at you again without. We was all set and I pulled up. <laughs> I pulled Tyra to the side and said, say this. And he looked at me, I'm crying over here. And he looked at me and was like, I'm not saying that shit. And I'm like, say it, man, it's gonna be really funny. And don't tell Mike, you gonna say it. Right. And I just remember the first time he said it and it, the camera was on Mike for the first the first uh, setup. Yeah. And Mike just stopped. It was just like, what? And I said, well, we got in the editing room. I was like, oh, I'm definitely keeping that. It was, it, Mike Mike hit the nail on the head. It was, it was a, uh, those moments, those moments you can't write, those are, those are, those are what, what I love to do in film. And Mike knows this. I love the freedom of, of creating on the set because yeah. once you've lived or experienced real family, or you really are making movies that come from a real place, this is what happens. Like, this is what you know, this yeah. is, you can't write this. So, so someone in the room can't engineer those lines. That's me. That's something Mike would say with his friend or his cousin or, and I'm like, no, this is how real and intimate we are with the product to where it's okay to laugh or it's okay to have a joke or it's okay to be funny here and there. And, and 
I, I think those moments are so great because they're human moments. And like you just said, you laughed and you rewound it while, because it is funny. That's, that's, you know, and, and anyways, I, I love those moments and Mike was able to capture that. And, and it, uh, it, it became a very, very good moment in the movie because it showed how close Tyron and Derek were as family. And um, that's what they came from, you know, young kids talking about each other. So it's great. Absolutely. We've been talking about family a lot in the last couple of seconds. And I just want to flip to, um, there's a scene that Derek has with his mom when he's he's been accused, he's trying to get it together. He's trying to figure out what to do. And she has, you all have that scene together where she basically tells you to honor your name for a man to honor his name and fight for his name is everything. And I love that scene because black women are strong, but black mamas are a whole nother animal. And some mm -hmm. black mamas can, you know, not intentionally, but beat their sons down. And this mother didn't beat her son down. This mother lifted her son up in, in the midst of tragedy and upheaval and all of that. And I just wanted to get y'all's thoughts on that because that scene in out of the entire film really resonated and stuck with me in Fatal. And I just wanted to know how it resonated with you, Michael, as you were shooting it. And as you were listening to Denise Dows, the actress that played your mom, deliver that monologue to you. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, in all the conversations that I had with Roxanne and Dion about the script, that scene never came up. It was almost like a scene in passing, if that makes sense. Because there were so many other like things where you realize like, my wife's trying to kill me. Like, <laughs> you realize, like there's just these glaring moments in the script that are just devastating. And they, they sink the character of Derek even further into the ground. And they're just, they're just, they're the twist and the turns of the piece, but they actually, make you feel this relentless stress and pressure under which, Derek, uh, under which Derek is feeling. And it wasn't until we shot that scene that it resonated for me what that moment was. Mm -hmm. And Dion can tell you that it got me good. Oh. It got me so good. I have never forgotten that scene. Um, my mother passed in 2015 mm. and when Denise said those words to me, it, it spoke so deeply to the love that only your mother can have for you. Like the world can look at you and think that you're guilty of killing your wife or you're <laughs> guilty of doing this, you're doing that. And it's only your mom that could bring that kind of um, peace and understanding to your situation. And when, you know, I had never met Denise at that point. Mm. And so she, first take, I was like, <laughs> I just, she got me, she got me and it blew me away. And I have never forgotten her or that scene and when I was on uh, Stumptown on ABC, and they needed a woman to play my mother, Denise was my first first choice. Aww. I said, please call her, please have her come, please give her the role and, <laughs> and let's move on. Because I've worked with her and she she was phenomenal as my mother and I, I just wanted I just wanted to come back. And she was so she came back and she was grateful. And she was she was grateful and she was amazing. And we, you know, we keep in touch. So she's, she's, uh, she's special. Uh, shout out to Denise. And like you said, I don't know why the moment didn't resonate in the script, but it doesn't matter. It resonated on screen. It resonated when we shot it. And clearly it resonated for you as a viewer. So. Oh, most definitely. I'll never forget that scene. I was just like, oh, y'all gonna have Y'all gonna have black mama love while he running for his life too? What? And then on top of that, on top of that, I, I gotta give them credit again. I gotta give the Taylors credit again because they, it wasn't in the script, 
the voiceover at the end wasn't in the script. Mm. So they did that, you know, in post. And it was, it, I mean, the minute you see that hand come up and you hear her voice, I, I still, I get choked up at that again, you know? So it's, um, it's uh, <laughs> that, that moment became bigger. I, I, I think maybe it was big for you guys the whole time, but for me, it was, it, it became bigger in the film. For me, That's that correct. moment was everything. It, 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 it really, really, really was because family seems to be an underlying theme within this film, other than the fact that it is like an 80s erotic thriller. There's family underneath all of this. Mm -hmm. Hillary Swank's cal uh, character Val has a family. Like that's a whole nother element to her character that you really don't see coming. You just think she's crazy as hell. And then you realize, oh, there's a reason why she's like this. And that's the first time I've ever, because the movie reminded me of Fatal Attraction a little bit, especially that scene in the elevator where y'all ride up in the elevator. That's a scene that was in Fatal Attraction too. I peeped that. But um, it, it, even in Fatal Attraction, we didn't understand why she was the way she was. So in Fatal, when we see that she has a daughter, that the daughter has, is living with the dad and the dad is trying to move on with somebody else, that's what makes her snap. That's what made her go cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, right? So I love the fact that you all infiltrated that into the script because it adds a whole nother element as to why she's the way she is. There's a whole nother element added with Derek and his wife because that's his family. In addition to his mom and his cousin, he has this wife. They're having some issues, you know, but that's still his family. So I, I just wanted to point that out. That was some beautiful storytelling. So yeah. kudos and snaps and claps to y'all for that. You know, um, shout out to the, to the filmmakers for basically elevating the quote unquote crazy person. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's what elevates Fatal from Fatal Attraction is Absolutely. you have this character that quite frankly, her crazy is technically self-inflicted. Unlike the Glenn Close character in Fatal Attraction, we, which we don't know why she's at this point, you know in this particular film that you know, what Val has done to her own life is part of what is driving her crazy. Um, and so that, 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 that kind of gives her uh, I don't know, the permission to be broken. And I think when they meet in Vegas, you're talking about two broken people kind of clawing at each other because ultimately they, you know, they're both missing something that, that they need in their life. Um, and for Derek, obviously, you know, his wife, Tracy, you know, he's trying to turn the corner and, um, you know, turn things around and it's just, it might be too late. You know, the interest is, is, is gone. It, it might, I mean, it's really late, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's like, <laughs> the point of no that train left the station a whole long, long way ago. <laughs> she, she wants yeah. to end you, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, she got Thanos dreams for you. It's like, wow, okay. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Again, taking it to another level and elevating it from, you know, the film that people seem to be connecting it most to. There's another element of the film too, in addition to the family and, and the other things that we've already mentioned and discussed, there's this element of cops framing and pitting black people against one another, right? There's the element of that, that this habit that um, society has become accustomed to as of late of making people guilty before you get the facts. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? Dion, can you just speak to that for a second? Yeah, it's, you know, the movie, the movie deals with human people. You know, everything we're talking about, um, which is very interesting to me as I'm listening, because I just wanted to be quiet and kind of listen to everything. You know, when you make movies, when you make these films from a real place, real things get put in them. And what ultimately happens is it's up to viewers to find realism inside of these movies and be like, oh, that, that's why you like certain filmmakers. That's why you like certain craftsmen that make movies. You want, if you like Michael Mann, it's because he's two to two to T with real characters. If you like, you know, um, whomever that 
director is that you're finding something that's very witty about them. I love real people. And it takes a lot of time. It's taken us a very long time, me and Roxanne. We made some really, really good films where people discover them a year later, you know, only till we found real distribution. People now like, oh man, I've seen all your stuff. And this real realism is great. Um, Hillary Swank's character is a broken soul. Michael Ely's character is a broken soul. They meet in Vegas. They are both empty. And ultimately, when we begin to look at, you know, different levers that are being pulled in the film, she basically is not pre-setting him up. She basically uses him because she he used her. And mm -hmm. she's trying to find a way to actually fix something in her life. And it's the most, he's right there, you know? And I think a lot of people have impromptu lives like that. Like, I think this happens a lot in, in, in the world. Like you, so you get hit in the, you get hit once, you get hit another time, then, you know, somebody's jumping you and the next, the closest thing to you is a stick. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you pick it up. And, and I think life is a lot like that. And I think the movie is really cool that way that everyone's kind of stumbling into these things because it's, it's natural. And, you know, even the mom, like we were talking about her a moment ago, like, that's one of the most incredible scenes to me personally, um, you know, based on the fact that that comes from a very real place. I was raised by a single mom, mm. you know, my mom, you know, raised me and, and my brothers and we came from project housing and your mom is the most, you know, the strongest thing you have as a black man when you're growing up and people don't really understand it until you've lived that, you know, I've had to look at my mom. We have no lights and no gas in our house. And, and, you know, she's heating the house with an oven, you know, and the reality is, and your mom is telling you everything's going to be okay. And you know what? She said that, and I believe that, you know, and, and that's real, man. And then when you get into these spars in life, most times in this culture that we're in now, cancel culture, this is a time right now where you can wake up and somebody says on Instagram or Twitter that you're this and everyone agrees with them. You haven't even had a moment to respond or tell anyone your story. And I believe the Hillary uh, Swank character, she understands that. She utilizes that, right? It's not an old framing movie. She knows that, damn, I could do this. And this is true to form to what's going on right now in, with the police today. If I could point a picture and say you did this, then I could bang you and put you up on charges for that and everybody gonna believe it. With, within one second of, the young man being shot in his back seven times, in, in one second, one second, they had released, he had a record, he, uh, uh, he was in trouble, uh, he had a spousal abuse problem, and within an hour, everybody was going, well, yeah, you're a bad dude, man. That's Within one hour of George Floyd being killed, we were hearing reports that he was an ex-felon, and that's what happened. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying about yeah. We need to stop making people guilty until we have all the facts. Right. Well, that's, until that's, we have all the facts. Well, that's what the movie explores in a very cool way. So we're not beating you over the head with it. We're just playing with it a little bit so you understand. And that's why the mom is so great. And that's why I believe Michael Ely is so incredible in this movie is because it removes everything. And it says, and it asks the question, what is the most important thing we have as people in life today? Time, health, and your name. Who are you? What is your legacy? So he has to go. He gets the car taken, the house taken, the job taken, the business taken, right? And the ultimate, the thing that he's fighting for is the, to clear his name. And I said, man, this is the most, this is the dopest thriller that we've had because it means something. You yeah, know what and I, mean? I have so to tell you, I have to tell you, I've seen all of your films, right? You know this. I've seen all of your films. I think this one was your best work to date. And I straight up full on from my heart mean that. Oh, this wow. Is the that best means a lot. One. Thank you. This is your best one to date because it addresses so many issues and it's under the current, but it's there. And we've talked about a lot of them. But before we get out of here, we just have a couple of minutes left. I want to talk to Roxanne about, you know, getting the soundtrack together. I, it was not lost on me that y'all played Make It Last Forever by Keith Sweat. It was not lost on me that y'all had in that interrogation scene, there was an apparition 
with Michael looking in the glass and Hillary looking in the glass. And it was not lost on me that scene um, with the home invasion. From a producing standpoint, how difficult is it to budget out things like that? Because those things, it, they take a lot of time to shoot. Well, in my world, it's always hard because I don't <laughs> have no money ever. <laughs> but I mean, listen, the music is, is in the score is a character in the film, right? So it's just as important as the talent and the locations and everything else. So you gotta just make it work. You know what I mean? It's allocated in the very beginning. Um, there's key moments and key scenes where you have to make sure that the music is relatable and it shows up in the scene with the characters on point. So it tells that story and helps to move it forward. Cool. Well, y'all, I wish we had more time. I have so many now, more questions. Wait, that don't I end ask. it. Don't end it yet. Don't end it yet. Don't I end have it yet. To. Wait, I gotta say something. I gotta say something. I gotta make sure people understand, man, because this is film independent and I'm a giant fan and I'm a student of film independent. I've been around this brand for a very long time. I gotta make sure people really understand, man. Dante Spinotti nominated for three, two or three Academy Awards, has shot one, some of the most prolific films that we know, Last of the Mohicans, The Insider, Heat. <clears throat> this man came and did a LA thriller. This man came and worked on a under $7 million movie with us in LA and shot this thing, man. I believe it's, it's one of the most beautifulest films, I'm saying this for real, that he has ever shot. And it's not because it's us. And if you don't like the movie, I'm telling you, turn the movie down and watch it, okay? It's that great, the lighting. Jeff Zanelli, who scored Pirates of the Caribbean, and we used Jeff on Black and Blue, and I was just like, oh my God, this dude is incredible. And his work is incredible. I just want to make sure that everyone out there understands that independently, man, you don't have to depend on the major studios to go get the greatest people to work with you on your film. You can go get them. You can go sit down and talk to them and tell them what your vision is. And these people, because they are artists, they will go, I want to work with you and I want to build something great with you. And I feel like Fatal, do you know how many women historically have two Oscars? I think it's yes, four. I, do. I think it's three or four or mm -hmm. maybe three. I mean, Hillary mm -hmm. might be the third. And mm. for her to actually say, I've never done a movie like that. I'm going to come and play. Like, this is a big deal, man. And, and the fact that the audiences are responding to the movie, people love the film. I just want to say, man, and people of color are in position to make a film like this. That's a universal film with Black and white and Latino people. I just want to say, man, everybody out there, please watch Fatal. Please understand a lot of people went to work for this movie independently and made something very, very great and also use it as inspiration. Everybody out there young that's trying to make it, you don't have to just scrap and take whatever. Go get these people, man. They came from the same place as us and they want to make dope movies. And if you don't have $100 million to give them, just tell them what your heart says. And most of the time, these people will come play with you. That is the perfect note to end on. Thank you, Dion, for going, wait, wait, wait. I got something else to say. I gotta was, make sure, yeah. That was the, that was the perfect, that wait, was the wait, perfect. Wait, I got something else to say. <laughs> I got something else to say. Um, I just wanna give love to the cast, Mike Coulter, Damaris Lewis, Tyron Turner, Danny Pino, obviously Hillary Swank. I, we had an amazing cast and I thought everybody brought, you know, something fascinating to each character. And, you know, you talk about broken souls, Damaris Lewis played Tracy. Tracy is a broken, broken soul. And, you know, there's a whole lot going on there. So we, I just want to make sure we give love to everybody, um, you know, from the cast, Denise Dows, everybody who, yes. who, who brought it uh, for Fatal, because, you know, without those performances, um, you know, the movie wouldn't be as strong as it is. So thank you. Thank you to everybody in the cast as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Director I got Dion. one more thing I want to say one Michael. more time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was like, uh. <laughs> so thank you, Director Dion Taylor, the producer, right. <laughs> Roxanne Event, and Michael Ely. I love y'all so much. It was my pleasure to, to visit you and do a set visit, and it's been my even greater pleasure to speak with you and talk, uh, do a deep dive into Fatal today. 
I am your moderator, Carla Renata, the Curvy Film Critic, and we'll see y'all the next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.